Congress, where decisions affecting your life are made all the time. As set down in the Constitution, Congress was meant to be a body representative of the American people, a place where our voice matters. Our government can sometimes seem like a giant, impenetrable fortress, inaccessible by students like us. But that's not the reality. The power of the constituent is strong within these halls. We all have at least one issue we care deeply about, but how can we make a difference on the national level? Actually, it can be surprisingly easy. Sometimes all it takes is the passion of one constituent to affect real national change. But don't take our word for it. Here's what the actual insiders of Congress have to say. Constituents are the key to everything. Constituents hold a significant amount of influence. Being on the inside, it's pretty amazing of how important constituents are. I think it's great for people to come up and, and lobby their congressmen. I think that's a really great effort, and it's something that shouldn't be diminished even in an era where you have big outside groups doing that. I have always been guided from my county to my state to my federal days by the personal evidence that people provide. Everything from what meetings we're going to take to ideas for legislation. As a constituent, you hold tremendous power. The office is really attuned to when they call. We get a tally every day of every call that comes in and what the person wanted, who they were, and their address, and their phone number, and what issue they called about. We really try to see every constituent who comes in. Hopefully, they make an appointment. But even if they just show up out of the blue, we'll try to find five minutes to talk to them. Sometimes our constituents are also the experts on certain issues, dealing with local farming issues, for example. So I've done outreach directly to constituents, asking them what their thoughts are on the farm bill that's being debated in Congress, and saying, tell me what you think so that I know what the opinion is on the ground in terms of impact of this really big piece of legislation, and that's going to affect how we look at it. I entered this business at a time where there was a move to impeach a president and where there was great, a great disgruntled feeling with authority. I was determined to remove some of the tarnish that we were hearing about and to shine it. And the best way to shine it is to be there, engaged in community, being at the doorstep, asking, encouraging the commitment, the interaction with constituents. And that has made, I think, a profound difference in the way I guide myself, in the way that I've been moved and directed uh, and challenged. I think that uh, those are tremendous dynamics. The best use of your time is to have a concrete ask. Schedule something where you discuss a specific ask, a specific issue. These are the things I want to talk about. This is my specific concern. So say you're coming in ag advocating on the wars. Um, you don't want to just say, we want you to vote against the war. We want you to vote to bring troops home. If at all possible, know what bills are coming up that are going to deal with that and time your visit to match that. Or have a specific, at the very least, a specific goal in mind. We want troops home by the end of this year. Um, and then make your case for it and make that case locally relevant as much as you can, um, and, and again, specificity. Facts are a good thing. Numbers, statistics, anything you have to that extent. You know, obviously to be short with your point because, you know, when you're talking to a staffer, you don't want to um, typically give them a whole lot of information because that's just a lot and they're covering a lot of ground. Um, so the more concise you can be, I think, the better. But to also bring it back home and to say why it's important for the district. And then I've always found it's best to let the staffer talk to you and share their opinions and share their thoughts uh, on, your, on your issue. But then there's maybe other areas that are priorities for the member that you might be able to help with as well. And then you're, you're building a relationship. And then do follow up. You know, the staff office uh, in an office here is very busy. And Unintentionally, sometimes it can take a longer time than we plan to do things. So you should definitely follow up and send reminder emails saying, just wanted to check in and see if you've been able to add your boss to this issue and it's helpful. When you're in a face-to-face -face meeting with someone, this is about persuasion and a strong argument as opposed to arguing. Present your information as factually and clear as you can without a lot of passion, uh, without demonizing people who don't agree with you, and, and try to frame the argument in a way that people can hear, that, that just sort of talks about why this approach is, isn't, is one option and why it, you should consider it. 
really research the position of the person that you're meeting with, the congressman that you're meeting with, even if you're meeting with a staffer. See if there are, you know, say you're talking about defense spending. Maybe you're meeting with a congressman who really believes that we need a lot more defense spending, diametrically opposed to your position. Maybe at the very least there's a major program in the Department of Defense that he, doesn't, he or she doesn't agree with. Try to find those areas of commonality, find something that you can agree on and build from there. Too many people say, oh, I, when I'm in Washington, I've got to schedule time with my member, without realizing that their member of Congress is home a lot. And I've been in Washington for 20 years. I was a registered lobbyist before taking this job. And it is so chaotic up here. I just feel like if you're in the district, stay home and schedule a meeting when they're there. You'll get their full attention. They're not going to be pulled away for votes. You might get a half an hour with them. You might get them to even come and see your facility and meet with your clients or meet with your colleagues. So use what you've got, which is your local and their home, uh, and, and sort of build a relationship there. One of the, the biggest tools that is underutilized are letters to the editor. Um, we do clips every morning from every local paper, no matter how small. Um, we pay attention to student newspapers, so doing editorials or letters to the editor in student newspapers. Um, anything that you can do to get attention to your issue. Um, and if you are calling or emailing or writing letters, get your friends to do the same. Um, whether they live in our district or not, have them write their congressman about the same issue, but spread that effort. A bill comes up where we don't have a ton of background and we're waiting to hear from constituents to help influence um, our recommendation to the member. And it helps to hear, you know, if we get that volume of emails or calls or letters from people for us to say, look, people in the district really support this and that has a big impact on, on, con on the congressman. Every congressional office takes its mail operation very seriously, both in terms of getting back to constituents, but also keeping track of what they're saying. So at the end of each week in our office, we do a mail report for the chief of staff and for the congressman uh, that says what issues we got the most letters on. Um, occasionally, if you get creative in how you advocate, make a poster, send in something, um, a handwritten letter with a picture on it. You know, things that will get noticed and grab the attention. Um, that we absolutely listen to those. They've informed legislation we've introduced and they certainly inform how the congressman votes on legislation that comes before the House. When we're putting a budget together, when we're dealing with policy, it's so important for us to move beyond the, 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 uh, uh, the boundaries of accounting ledgers and and words on a piece of paper in legislative format and shell games where you move the, uh, the items on the, on the board. You need to overlay all of that discussion and decision making and advocacy with personal uh, testimony, with anecdotal evidence. To put a human face on the many discussions that we have really speaks to, I think, the core beginnings of this nation, which was about community, not about individual. Even the preamble to the Constitution begins with we, the people. And so I think to stay attached to our roots, to be that core essence of what our humble beginnings are about, it's about community. And so it's about putting the faces of community onto the work that you do. And so constituent uh, interaction is absolutely critical. It's not only helpful, it's essential.